Hut, hut, uh, goddamn football. Hike. That wasn't, that wasn't a football. Anyways, we have one of the most hyped and anticipated sporting events in all of America. The one and only Super Bowl. Give me that ball. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, a little fun fact about me. I don't care about sports. I really don't give a sh Hike! I suck at sports and I don't like watching it, but I love, I absolutely love sports anime, sports manga. I can watch even the most boring sports if they're in the anime or manga medium. For example, baseball. I find baseball terribly boring. Sorry, baseball fans out there. But when it's in an anime slash manga form like One Outs, Mmm, delicious. Bicycle racing. <sighs> but in Yoamushi Pedal, mmm, shouts out to Love He May. So now I'm gonna sit here for like 10 or more minutes just rambling about the different sports series I like, and I might even add why it's better than the real life counterparts. So with all that said, let's get um into for for formation and let's let's get down and uh, score. Some scores. That's what that's what sports people say, right? Let's talk about a more recent-ish anime. The anime slash manga that makes you feel nice. It's Haikyuu, created by Haruichi Furudate. First published in Shonen Jump, February 2012, and the anime first ran on April 2014 by Production IG. Same studio that animated Ghost in the Shell and other sports animes like Kuroko's Basket and Ace of the Diamond with Madhouse. Fun fact, did you know that Production IG also did an OVA about volleyball before? It was called Shoujo Fight and the single episode OVA was bundled together with the sixth volume of the manga. Anyway, back to Haikyuu, another classic case of the underdog. This time, our main character is named Shoyo Hinata. He's a young lad trying to become the volleyball king. Just kidding. He wants to be like his volleyball hero who's short like him, nicknamed the Little Giant. Oh, as you can already guess, Hinata is a, a little short. Now, for the position he wants to play, it's usually advantageous to have a tall player. But Hinata makes up for it with his FPS gamer level reaction speed and incredible jumping ability. He goes through a lot of hardships trying to play the sport that he loves so much, and that's another one of my weaknesses. Any sappy, sad story, eight times out of ten, it hits me and I and I end up, you know, shedding some tears. I can't lie, I'm a sucker for some good, sad backstories or just any sad moments in anime and manga. Quick shout outs to Ahiru no Sora because the basketball manga and anime also has a lead character that's short and has his own sad backstory. Anyways, back to Haikyuu, which you can actually watch the latest season four on Crunchyroll. Com. Which also has a very solid bro sportsman. The Sasuke to his Naruto, the Rukawa to his Sakuragi, our ally slash rival slash best friend, Tobio Kageyama. I already like a good rivalry and some good old fashioned sports shonen, power of friends trope, and I really like Haikyuu because of the rules of the sports itself. In the series, Hinata's thing is being fast and jumping high and he can do a mean hit that volleyball. And Kageyama is the setter. His role is to deliver the volleyball to the hitters and set up the plays. Because of these roles, Kageyama and Hinata have to work together and we, as the audience, enjoy watching them both grow. Haikyuu is a great example of a series that taught me a whole new sport. Unlike Ice Shield 21, I had no idea how to play Volleyball. I, I, I had no idea the rules. Now, I knew American football because my older brother was super into it, even though we lived out in Australia. Back to Haikyuu. So before watching this, I didn't know any rules of the game, what anyone's positions were, and even if I did know the names, uh, I didn't know what they really did. This was just a long-winded way of saying, I don't know, Jack Diddley squat. But just like any great sports anime and manga, it got me. Someone who has never seen a volleyball game, or probably will, screaming, don't mind, don't mind, and nice to serve. Fun fact, if you look at the r slash haiku, you can see people going in depth about what position Hinata should be playing, and they go into detail about his skill level and technique, as if Hinata's a real person. Sorry to say, y'all, he isn't. So, since it's football season, let us talk about a classic football anime slash manga, Ice Shield 21. 
Mmm, mmm, delicious American football in Japan. Quick facts about this manga it's written by Richiro Inagaki, who is now working with Boichi creating Dr. Stone, and illustrated by Yusuke Murata, who is now extremely well known as the illustrator for One Punch Man. The Aisho manga started in July 2002, with the anime starting in April 2005 by Studio Gallop, most well known for animating the Yu Gi Oh! series. The plot for this is very simple. There was once a high school boy named Sena Kobayakawa, a good old fashioned pushover who was bullied into being a gopher for the school delinquents. So, Sena is a great gopher because he uses incredible fast speed and his expert ability to dodge people to get snacks and drinks. For the bullies, so he doesn't get beat up as much. But one day, the school's residential demon and、uh, weapons expert Yoichi Himura spots him, and he bullies Sena into becoming the running back for the Damon Devil Bad High School American football team and giving him the new title Ice Shield 21. That's, that's a Vine joke. RIP Vine. Now, let's just dive right into why I absolutely love this series. Even though I can literally count with my hands the amount of times I've seen a real football game, it's like. It's probably six or five. So, first off, we have the classic underdog story. Not only is the main character an underdog, but even the Damon Devil Bats, the team themselves, are an underdog, which gives that, you know, that, that, that Mighty Ducks kind of, kind of feel, you know? It's beautiful. Every time Senna, the main character, proves to himself and to others his skill as a running back, oh, I just get goosebumps. Honestly, I don't think I'll ever get tired of the age old trope of having a bunch of side characters and background characters go, this kid will never make it to what? Can a high schooler run that fast? My god, he's so good, but that's impossible. What I really love about i s h i l 21 is the characters. More specifically, the footballers themselves. I love how straightforward they are. So, like, for example, we have、uh, Joe Tetsuma, who is the receiver for the Seibu Wild Gunmen. His whole theme is that he's like a locomotive. If you throw a pass, he will be there to receive it, running just like a train, nothing stopping his path. Also, his whole personality is kind of like that, too. He will do whatever you tell him to do to an unrealistic extreme. The first time we meet him, we find out that the coach told him to drink water aggressively. And so he drank water so much that he became inflated, like Luffy in Alabasta Arc, and he got sick. Mid game. The next reason, actually, why I think Ice Shield and a lot of sports anime and manga are just neato is the moves and abilities. Now, just like any shonen action story, most sports titles have characters with their own special moves and abilities. Like I said before about video game characters,、uh, this also applies here. In Ice Shield World, we have Gridiron, 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 Gridiron. The rules are the same as the real life version. But the key difference is everybody got that anime power in i s h o w 21. Each football move has a name and a visual, and it's awesome. For example, we have Sena running, and then bam, three dudes come out and try and tackle him. He assesses the situation and he activates Devil Bat Ghost, where he turns into mist and just passes by the opposition. Or we get the Kyoshin Poseidon team. They have a special defense move called High Wave, which is basically them just ready to tackle with their arms up in the air. But since all three of them are so damn tall, and this is Ice Shield we're talking about, they create an aura. Of giant waves that come crashing down on the opposition team. Now, these are all very much dramatized, obviously, and I can just sit here for days listing off the real life versus anime Ice Shield edition, but y'all get the point. I just love special moves. They're cool, they give a load of personality to the matches. Shout out to Prince of Tennis as well, which I only read a little and watched a little bit because my friend was super into it. I remember seeing one of the characters named Kaido hit a sick snake shot with a ball curves from outside the net and into the opponent's area. And all the characters did that classic <gasps> moment. But speaking of themes as well, I love how the teams are basically characters themselves. Damon has their residential devil, Hiruma, but we also have a cowboy themed Seibu Wild Guns with their quarterback, Shin Mushinokoji, aka The Kid. I mean, just, just look at this dude. He's like McCree. We have the Shinrai Jinaga, which is a football team from an all boys Buddhist school. Even the kids going to that school got on their monk robes and they also look like Japanese mythological beings. And finally, Look at this dude. Look at this guy. 
Look at this dude. In any other manga, he would be some hybrid, half-human, half-chameleon villain, but no, he's just a high schooler playing for his team, the Zokugaku Chameleons. Also, Aisho 21 has the funny trope of, are these actually high schoolers? With characters like Yamabushi, Banba, Gao, and Gen Takekura, aka Musashi, who even in the show, the grown ass looking characters ask if Musashi is actually a high schooler. Going back to the whole theme and caricature aspect, I really love this bit because in the real world, humans are, you know, complex creatures. Not saying that these characters aren't that complex, but we will honestly never find any high school sports team, or any sports teams for that matter, who will just dedicate their entire team to a motif and just straight up their own personal personality is based on that motif. Which came first? Did these kids already have this personality and aesthetic and then decide to enroll in the appropriate schools? Or once they got into the school, they changed their whole human personality and aesthetic. Now, this particular reason why I love Ice Shield applies to all the other sports titles. So, as a non-real-life sports fan, the only time I would watch sports is if I would somehow be in a live game, because, you know, socializing with other humans and all of that, or I'd somehow end up watching these sports highlights in the news. Who doesn't like sports highlights, really? It's just a montage of cool sports moments all squished into one, which brings me back to Ice Shield 21 and honestly all other sports titles I'll be talking about, which is I love sports anime and manga because it's just highlights, but better. Every single match is exciting and thrilling. Well, the ones that they actually show us and not the ones they put in montages. I love the ups, the downs, the inner monologues, the commentators, including the announcers, fellow teammates, and let us never forget the random ass side characters in the audience who seem to know a whole lot of information about that particular sport. Now, we talked about some newish-ish sports series. Now, let's talk about one of the longest running mangas in Japan, Hajime no Ippo, also known as Fighting Spirit. First serialized in Shonen Jump on October 1989 and currently has 125 volumes and 1,274 chapters, with the anime adaptation first televised in Japan on October 2000 by Madhouse, with the third season animated by Madhouse and MAPPA. Hajime no Ippo tells the tale of Makunochi Ippo, another classic underdog story of a bullied young lad who takes up the sport of boxing to find out what does it mean to be strong. Hajime no Ippo ticks off a lot of the tropes I already enjoy. Underdog protagonist with a sad backstory? Check. Interesting characters with their own specializations? Check. And double check because of the existence of Masaru Aoki. This man is a league of his own in terms of raw anime sports special moves and powers. Spoiler alert, this man has a special move where he just literally looks away. He just turns his head in front of the opponent and 9.5 times out of 10, the opponent turns their head with him because they just, they just, they just gotta see, like, what, what, what the hell is he looking at? And the moment the enemy has looked away, BAM! Aoki punches him and usually gets a down. And finally, does this series have a good old highlight real anime sports experience? That's a check. Yeah, that's three che I lost count of how many checks I did. Every single match in Ippo is thrilling. You got punches, action, in a monologue, commentary, just going everywhere. Hajime no Ippo is also great at showing us just the power and the result of experiencing that said power. What I mean is that when Ippo punches someone, you feel it. All fans of Ippo know that sweet, sweet moment when Ippo gets that liver blow and the opponent just goes, Ugh! and their mouth guard's about to like fall off or has fallen off. Like, oh, that's a picture perfect Ippo moment if I say so myself. And as I said, boxers have their own flavor and specialty, so it's always fun watching different characters go head to head. And here, unlike in real life, I know their backstories and I know what they've done to get here. It's like watching a trailer video before the big fight and you get to see the boxers or any athlete talk about their journey to get to that point. Luckily, instead of a trailer, we're watching a flashback episode or we're just there live hanging with the main characters weeks and days before the big fight. As y'all can guess, that just gets me way more invested because now I know Ippo's backstory, the opponent's backstory, Aoki's backstory, Joe Mama's backstory. I have to confess, I do like sports. 
I'm a big fan of martial arts, and you know that's 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 sports. But I'm still gonna go with this title, so screw it, I ain't changing anything. Speaking of martial arts anime slash manga, honorable mention to Baki. That's a martial arts anime and manga, but I cannot call anything that happens in Baki sports. What do y'all think though? Comment down below. Is Baki a sports manga? I've been rambling on for a really long time, so the last one I will quickly squeeze in is Yoamushi Pedal, written by Wataru Watanabe, first serialized on Weekly Shonen Champion in February 2008, with the anime by Studio TMS Entertainment starting on October 28. 13. Real quick synopsis, Sakamichi Onoda, a poor otaku who ever since he was a little boy, he rode his bike and cycled his way to the capital of otaku life, Akihabara. He did this every weekend and the distance back and forth was 90 kilometers, which um, is 55 miles for all you Americans out there. He also lived in a steep hill, so naturally he developed a solid endurance and the ability to climb, which is a bike sports term for going up hills on a bike, which... That's just in general. Uh, it's not even a bike term, climbing. You know. Anyhow, after some great uplifting sports moments, we see Onoda joining the cycling club and pedaling his way to the top. So why do I like this series? Well, first off, Onoda is a great MC. He's an underdog, which by this point you've seen a pattern. I love me some dogs that are under. And honestly, I just felt bad for him at the start because he was just lonely and, and I wanted to, you know, wanted him to have some friends. When he said he biked alone to Akihabara ever since he was a kid, even though that scene was used as a shock moment, I, I kind of felt more sad for the kid, man. Onoda is just a good kid and a special magical shout out to the theme Love Hime. My god, that track is a bop. Another thing I love about Yoamushi is actually, I forgot to mention this for all the other sports animes too, but I really like the way they handled the power evolution of Onoda. I particularly like the way in this anime they use the power-ups for simple but crucial things like adjusting your bike seat so it's more optimized for your height, getting new bike gears, getting a whole new bike, learning a new bike riding move, and other improvements. Throughout the series, we see Onoda get stronger and better at cycling, and it's addicting, watching this dorky kid just enthusiastically get better and happier. But this power growth trope is much like most shonens ever. I should have mentioned this before, but uh, Ippo is a great example of this too. We see him train tirelessly at the start of the series, and we see him get stronger, but he doesn't stop. We constantly watch him training more and more, getting stronger and stronger. And we can even see the fruits of his labor in moments like the weigh-ins, when the reporters are like, Ooh, Ippo's back got thicker. Look at his arms. They must have more power. It makes me proud, even though I, I, I didn't do Jack Diddley. Hi! Actually, real quick, another reason why I love sports anime is, boy, does it get my lazy ass pumped up to do actual exercise. Fun fact. I used to watch Run With The Wind while I ran to get myself motivated because I wanted to watch something as I ran on a treadmill, so I decided to watch other people run. Anime form. Spoiler alert, I never finished Run With The Wind because I, I, I stopped running. Oh, and uh, before we start wrapping this up, uh, real quick, uh, sorry to all the baseball anime slash manga fans. I've tried reading Ace of the Diamonds, Major, and tried reading and watching Big Wind Up. But even in anime form, I really don't dig baseball. I'm sorry. Okay, that's not entirely true. I do love rookies and one outs, but rookies, as I said, is more of a drama, and one outs is not really a baseball manga fully. It's like gambling and mind games and baseball all mixed together. It's like kaiji meets baseball. Zawa, zawa. Before we do the whole signing off thing, I know what some of y'all thinking. Tim, you fool. If you actually watched sports, you would know that most of the things you enjoy about sports anime, you can get the same experiences in real life. Like if I kept up with all of that news and tabloids on athletes, I could get their backstory. Now obviously the anime signature power moves can't be real, but even I can admit I've seen some amazing plays, shots, goals, tries, you name it. Hell, speaking of underdog story, I watched the LA Kings hockey game with my mates and watched them climb all the way to the top and win the 2012 Stanley Cup despite all odds. Even with those real life moments, I'll be real with you. Real life just don't hit right.
Now, you put some anime over it and all the bells and whistles, well, yeah, bet you I'll check it out. Thank you for just watching and listening to a man just go on and on about sports anime and manga. I know I missed out a ton of sports animes and mangas, so by all means, please go buck wild in the comments below about your favorite sports animes. Let's all get together, folks, and just talk about sports, but only the anime kind. Actually, screw it. Hey, if you want to talk about sports in real life that you like, comment them down below too. Check out our other videos and be sure to subscribe and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys at the at the gym. Pumping, pumping iron. See you at the see you at the sports field. The one and only. Super. Too early. <laughs> Give me the ball. Ow. Give me that. Jesus Christ. Give me the ball. Give me that ball. Give me that ball. Give me that ball.